John chapter 8, verses 44 to 47. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar, and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. Which of you convinces me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do ye not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. Thank you, Daniel Moses. Good job of scripture reading this morning. Appreciate the prayer that Brother Bobby prayed a while ago that he led for us. And the Brother Philip is doing a fine job in these beautiful songs today. And we're so glad to have each and everyone here this morning. I'm glad Sister Joanne's able to be here with us today. We continue to pray for her and hope that all will go well with her and her treatments and she will be much improved. Glad Jerry's able to be here with us today. And uh, as was mentioned by Brother Philip, uh, Benji's home with with his Lydia today. We want to pray for them. And uh, also Brother Henry Massey. It's good to have Sister Massey here with us, but we want to pray for Brother Henry, who's in NHC in Columbia. And uh, brother and sister Chumley and their grandson and, and little Zoe, we want to keep her in our prayers. And uh, Phyllis Roberts and Charlie Robinson. And there are many others. We don't want to overlook anyone, but we want to pray for each and every one. But it is good to be here on this Lord's Day. And we know, as Daniel Moses read a while ago from the words of Jesus in John chapter 8, that those who do not hear God are not of the truth, but those who are of God will hear, that is, heed the truth. That's the idea, the principle there. And John 8, beginning at verse number 39, they answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said unto them, If ye were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. But now ye seek to kill me, a man that hath told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. Ye do the deeds of your father. Then said they to him, We be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, ye would love me, for I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand my why do you not understand my speech, even because ye cannot hear my word? Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. Which of you convinceth me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do you not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. What a contrast between Jesus Christ and his Father and the devil. Christ and the Father are of the truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. John 14, verse 6. But the devil is not of the truth. In fact, Jesus said that he is a liar and the father of the lie. All lies ultimately go back to Satan, to the devil. Whenever people lie, that's of the devil. That is of Satan. 
So this morning we want to look at a few things that Satan says in contrast with what the Word of God says. What does the devil say? Now, one thing that the devil will tell us is that you have plenty of time to obey God. We remember in James chapter 4, James says, Whereas you know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time, and then vanisheth away. I remember a gentleman that I knew in the state of Virginia many years ago. His name was Wes. He was an older man. And he came with his good wife to the services down to Roanoke, up to the mountains, to worship every Sunday. And I've even eaten in their house, one of the finest meals I ever ate. She and her sisters were great cooks. And he was a very likable man, so nice, but he never obeyed the gospel. <coughs> so one day I heard that this man had passed away. It was very sad. He had heard many gospel sermons in that small congregation, but he never obeyed the Lord. My friends, this is one of the devastating lies that the devil tells many people who seemingly are good people in many ways, but they're lost in sin, is that you've got plenty of time to get right with God. We don't have plenty of time. Even if we live to be 100 years old, James said that life is like a vapor. Did he not say that? He did say it. And the wise man said, Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. We do not know what tomorrow will bring. Thus we should do, as Peter said, and give all diligence to make our calling and election sure, 2 Peter 1 and verse number 10. Another lie that the devil will tell us is, and he tells these lies through men who are his children. You know, Jesus called those Jews who rejected him and who disbelieved him. They, he said to them, that the devil was their father. So the devil works through his children. That's what he does. And here's another lie that he tells. He tells you, follow the crowd, follow the world. You don't need to follow Jesus Christ. Moses said, thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil. Exodus 23, 2. But Jesus said, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Luke 9, 23. Here's another lie of the devil. He says that one church is as good as another. That the Lord has many churches. But Christ, the Christ of truth said, upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Matthew 16, verse 18. We know that those who hear the word of God that Jesus described here are those who heed and do the will of God. Christ tells us that we cannot enter into heaven unless we do the will of the Father in heaven. My friends, we cannot be the children of the heavenly Father unless we do the will of the Father, which is in the Bible. Jesus said, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Isn't it amazing how many people have difficulty with that little two-letter word, D-O, do? A word that's very easy to spell. A, a young child learns early in life how to spell that word, D-O, do. One of the easiest words to spell is do. But yet it is a word that many people have difficulty in performing because their heart and their attitude is not right toward God. This is the difference, my friends, between the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. The spirit of truth is, as Jesus said, to hear the will of God in the sense of heeding it, to do the Father's will. The spirit of error is to reject the truth. In 1 John chapter 4, we note here, in beginning at verse 4, John said, Ye are of God, little children. They were children of God, like little children. 
and have overcome them, that is the falsifiers, those who were not of the truth, because greater is he that is in you, that is Jesus Christ, who is in you, than he that is in the world. They are of the world. Therefore, speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us, that is us the apostles, inspired men of God. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. It's easy to conclude here that the word here in this context means to take heed because only those who hear in the sense of heeding God's word are those who are of the truth, who are of God. On the other hand, there is the hearer in the sense of only hearing audibly but not obeying that James mentions. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving your own selves. James 1 verse 22. My friends, we know that the devil has been at the lying business for a long, long time. When God warned the first man and woman not to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, for in the day that you eat thereof you shall surely die, in Genesis 2, 17. After that, Satan came into the garden in the form of a serpent, in Genesis 3, 4, and he lied to the woman. He said, ye shall not surely die. She gave in to the solicitation of the devil there in sin, and she gave in to her husband, and he ate of the forbidden fruit, and he sinned also. The devil knows how to deceive people if we will allow ourselves indeed to be deceived. Now let's look at a few other things that the devil lies about. There are many, many things we could talk about today, but let's consider a few others this morning. The devil tells us, and you know in the case, many cases, school children hear this at school. They hear this from textbooks that are supposed to be telling them the truth. But they hear the devil's lie that you came about from evolution, the Big Bang. You, are, you just came here by chance. You are just another animal. That's all you are. That's what many school children are taught. And some conclude, well, why not just live like an animal? We can shoot each other. We can commit homosexuality. We can commit fornication. We can do drugs. We can do whatever we want because, after all, we're just animals. That's what many children conclude, and young people, because they are fed these lies of the devil. We have to be sure that our children and young people do not believe the devil's lies. Children, young people, our precious children here today, and all of us, precious in the sight of God, we need to know that we have been created in the very image of God himself. That we are the offspring of God, as Paul told the Athenians in Acts 17. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them, Genesis 2, 7. That doesn't sound like we're just animals, does it? We are created in the very image of God. We have an eternal soul that Jesus Christ died for and shed his blood for. That is how very important and precious that we are in the sight of God. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, John 3, 16, for every one of us. The Lord warns us to respect and to fear God first. And fear not them which kill the body but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Matthew 10, verse 28. But now here's another devil's lie. After this life, it's all over. You're just like Rover, dead all over. You know, like a dog. You're just, you're just dead. You're gone. That's it. No more. That is a devastating lie. That is the belief of the humanist, the agnostic, the atheist. They believe that this life is all there is. What pitiful people. What sad people. 
that have no hope beyond this world. But my friends, the fact of the matter is that when this world is over and the last day comes, it won't be over for the devil himself. If you'll turn to the book of Revelation in the 20th chapter in the 10th verse, you will see what will happen to the devil in the end. And it won't be over for him at all. The Bible says, And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, which where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. No Satan, who lies to people, and who tells them that this life is all there is, has an eternity of hell fire to look forward to forever and ever. Now, do we want to be in the lake of fire with the devil? Verse 15, And whosoever was not found written in the book of life is cast in the lake of fire. We all need to be sure that we have obeyed the gospel of Christ, that we have been saved, that our name has been put in the book of the slave, the Lamb's book of life. And not only that, that we are faithful to the Lord. You know, we can have our names removed from that book after we have been baptized into Christ. As you go back to the book of Revelation in the third chapter, verse 4 and 5, the Lord addresses the church at Sardis along this line. He said in Revelation 3, verses 4 and 5, Thou hast a few names even in Sardis which have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment. My friend, at this point in time, if you have obeyed the gospel, you're in Christ and you're faithful, you are overcoming the world. But don't let the devil turn you back and overcome you again. Because he goes on to say, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life. That is the one who overcomes the world. But I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. We want to be sure that our names stay in the Lamb's book of life. Because this world is not all there is. God does not lie. God tells us that after this life, after man leaves this world, he goes to his long home. Ecclesiastes 12, 5. That's his eternal home. That doesn't mean he immediately faces judgment, but he goes into eternity to await the judgment. And at that point, at the judgment, he will either be cast into hell or welcomed into heaven. We know according to Matthew 25, Jesus will say to the sheep on the right hand, Come, ye blessed of my Father, and inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. But he will say to the goats on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. In Ecclesiastes 12 and verse 7, and the dust shall return to the earth as it was, and the Spirit unto God who gave it. Our souls are going to return to God to do with our soul as He chooses. And what He will choose will be according to how we have lived. In Hebrews 9, verse 27 and 28, And as is appointed unto man once to die, but after this the judgment, Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. One day this world is going to end. In 2 Peter 3, beginning at verse number 10, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat? This earth is not all there is. There is coming a day when the end will be, and we will face God, and we will face eternity. In 1 John 2 and verse 17, 
and the world passeth away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Now, my friends, how's the evolutionist going to prepare you for that? How's the evolutionist going to prepare you for eternity? How's the evolutionist going to prepare us to face Christ as we stand before the judgment seat of Christ to be judged according to the things that we have done in our body, according to that we have done, whether it be good or bad, 2 Corinthians 5.10. The evolutionists cannot prepare us for eternity. Only by following the Lord in His Word, the Lord of truth, can we be prepared to face eternity. But then another lie that the devil tells is that it's your body. Do with it as you please. We hear this argument sometimes regarding people who want to justify abortion, especially in the women's liberation movement. Well, it's my body. No, when you conceive a child, that's not your body. That is another soul that belongs to God. That is another being. That's not the body of the mother. That little child is in her womb for nine months if it goes full term. And then that little child is separated from the body of its mother. But that is another child within the body of that mother. Do you believe that Mary and Jesus are the same person? We know that the Bible says that Mary was with the child of the Holy Ghost, referring to Jesus. There in Matthew chapter 1. Did Mary ever say that Jesus was her body? She never said that. We know that's a very foolish notion. That abortion is murder. And that God hates the hands that shed innocent blood, according to what is taught in Proverbs 6, 16 and 19. Some conclude that because it's their body, that they can dance and commit other lascivious acts. They can wear immodest apparel and entice the opposite sex. That uh, they can flirt and tease and be vulgar, commit fornication and adultery. And they can gamble. That they can cheat and lie and take God's name in vain. And do all these things contrary to the will of the Lord. But the Bible says that marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled, but whoremongers and adulterers. God will judge. Hebrews 13, 4. And in Galatians, the fifth chapter, verses 19 to 21. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, with which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Now we are reaching a time of year in which people are beginning to remove their apparel from their body and putting their flesh on display. And sad to say, but I've even seen members of the church do this as if it did not matter. But our body is to belong to God. God tells us, for you are bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and your spirit which are God's. 1 Corinthians six twenty. That means that we must dress as a Christian should dress. We should walk and talk as a Christian should. That we should give our lives in service to the Lord and the kingdom. That we should not be living for the world. And in 1 Timothy 2, 9 and 10, Paul said, In like manner also that women adorn themselves in a modest apparel, with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broided hair or gold or pearls or costly array, but which becometh women professing godliness with good works. But the principle of being pure and holy in the way that we live is not only for the women, it's for the men too. Paul wrote to all the Christians at Rome in Romans 12, 1, 
I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. We should be like the Apostle Paul, whose desire was in his body to magnify Christ, whether by life or by death. And I'm paraphrasing that there in Philippians 1.20. But this was his desire, whether by life or by death, to magnify Christ in his body. In the next verse, he said, For to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. In verse 20, According to my earnest expectation, my hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but that with all boldness, as always, so now also Christ shall be magnified in my body, whether it be by life or by death. Christ should be seen in the life that we live. The Apostle Paul did not want to live for the flesh. He said that he was willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 8. And one day we will have a glorious body like unto Christ's glorious body according to what Paul taught in Philippians 3 verse 21. That is, if we go to heaven. But then, another lie that the devil tells is this, especially to young people. You need to try this one time, one time. Just think about drinking alcohol. The alcoholic, the drunkard, if he had refused that first drink, he would never have become a drunkard, would he? If he had not taken the first drink. But sadly, many people do not listen to the Bible. The Bible warns us that wine is a mocker. And strong drink is raging, and whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. Proverbs 20 and verse number 1. And so if we never take that first drink, we will not become a drunkard. Think about the drug situation that we have. How sad it is that a young person can take one pill and perhaps become addicted to drugs. Isn't that sad? The devil tells you, you try one more, one time, just a little bit. That's the devil talking this. And remember, the devil works through people. Be not deceived. Evil companionships corrupt good morals. First Corinthians 15, 33. Sometimes those people that would encourage us to take the first drink. They end up destroying themselves with drink or with drugs, as the case may be. In the back of chapter 2, verse 15, Woe unto him that giveth his neighbor drink, that put us thy bottle to him, and makest him drunken also, that thou mayest look on their nakedness. Woe unto those who will cause others to drink or commit other sins. The devil might tell the young person, well, you, you, need, you need to try, you need to try fornication. Just try it one time. Uh, you know, I remember several years ago, uh, there was an article in Ann Landers, of course, she's been dead now for many years, but this was even when uh, we were coming up. An article in there that made it sound like if you didn't have sex by the time you were like a certain age in your teenage years that something might be wrong with you. And there was a boy in our class, and he, I think he came to me and he was talking to me about it. He was concerned. Don't listen to the world, friends. Don't let the world make you think something's wrong with you because you're doing what's right. It's those people who are doing these things that are in the wrong. They're the ones that are in trouble. Don't let the devil make us think something's wrong with us because he'll do that if we listen to the world. He will make us think something is wrong with us. But God says, whether it's one time or many times regarding sin, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. 
and that the way of transgressors is hard, Proverbs 13, 15. There is no peace, saith my God, to the wicked, Isaiah 57, 20, 21. The devil lies again. He says the material, physical world is all that matters. What we see now, he causes people to be covetous and to love money, the love of money which is the root of all evil. 1 Timothy 6, 10. He caused them to long for the things of this world, to desire sinful pleasure. Moses was wise. He, by faith, chose rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, according to Hebrews chapter 11. The Bible speaks to those who are lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, 2 Timothy 3, 4. But the Father says, Seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. Colossians 3, verse 1 and 2. God tells us regarding Abraham, for he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Hebrews 11 and 10. Abraham did that by faith, the Bible teaches us. It is by faith that we look for heaven. And if we have true faith, we're going to be longing for heaven. We're not going to want to stay on this earth, in this old world. But we are going to be like Abraham, the great and godly faithful man of God, who looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. We will be, as Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, in verse number 18, while we look not at the things which are seen, that is the physical, the material, but at the things which are not seen, the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. The material, the physical things, they're only temporary. But remember the things that are not seen are eternal. Amen. Let's set our affections on things above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. And then before we close, the devil says, there is no such thing as heaven and hell. Just live for today. Tomorrow does not matter. Will we be deceived by the father of lies? Will we listen to the devil? Let us prepare for eternity. We will be in one of two places forever. Even to the youngest child here today, Life will be short to our little children. It won't be long. 80, 90 years pass as a vapor. It won't be long until all of us Amen. are in eternity. It won't be long. And as we look back on this life, will it be a regret that we have? Or will it be a gladsome heart that we have because we are reigning and rejoicing in heaven with our Savior in a beautiful and wonderful place that the devil cannot take away from us that we cannot lose once we get there a place where God shall indeed wipe away all tears from our eyes and there shall be no more death neither sorrow nor crying neither shall there be any more pain for the former things are passed away Revelation 21, verse 4. After we've lived in this life for a while, we've been through grief, we've seen loved ones snatched from before us, and we've suffered sickness and disease, we can appreciate those thoughts more and more, can we not? That there is coming a time that the saved will be in a perfect home with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And God shall wipe away all tears from our eyes. What a glad day that will be. What a glad day that will be. That's the truth of the matter. The truth of the matter is, sadly, that many people are going to be in that other place. The place that is so tormenting and terrible that Jesus would say this, and if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out and 
It is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire, where their worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. Surely the Lord doesn't want us to go to that place. He's done all that's possible. Heaven has done all that can be done to save us from that place. God gave his only begotten son. His love for us was so great. And the love of Jesus Christ for us was so great that he shed his precious blood. According to Revelation 1.5, the Father and the Son have done all that can be done to save us. But now we have to decide that we want to be saved. God wants us to be saved. He's made the provisions for us. But now we have to decide that we want to serve the Lord and go to heaven more than anything else. More than anything, we want to serve Christ and be with him forever. And we can do that. The Lord hasn't made it impossible. He never said that it would be easy, but yet he has promised to be with us. And we know that if God be for us, who can be against us? He said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. If he is with us, we know we can make it. If we will. If we truly love him and keep his word as he taught. And this morning, if we should have any here who need to come in obedience of the gospel, let us come to him in faith. Hebrews 11 and 6, there's no other way that we can please him. We cannot please him without faith. Let us repent. Christ taught that unless we repent, we will perish. Luke 13, verse.